So I think we're finally to the point where it's time to call it quits on Taylor Horton Tucker. He's been in the league for multiple years now, four years to be exact. And I know you could say, okay, well, he's only 22 years old or yeah, he's 20. He just turned 22 in November, the end of November. So maybe just maybe someday he will become that good player that he's supposed to be. But I just don't think that it's even a realistic possibility whatsoever. I don't even think he will last another 10 years in the league. I think that that would be a stretch because I just don't think he's that good of a basketball player. If you look at his numbers for the past couple of years, they haven't been great. The most he's averaged was last season for the Lakers. He averaged 10 points per game. The season previous, he averaged 9. And then his rookie year, 5.7, but he only played in 6 games. This year with the Jazz, so far he's played 36 games. He only started one of them, and he only gets 16 minutes per game. So he doesn't play a ton, and he only gets 7 points per game, as well as .4 blocks, .7 steals, 2.4 assists, and 2.5 rebounds, as well as 1.3 turnovers. And his shooting numbers have never been that good. From two-point line, or well, not two-point line, just two-pointers in general, only shoots 49.6%. Not that great. And then if you look at his three-point percentage, it's 25.8%, which is awful. I believe that's worse than what Russell Westbrook is shooting. So that is terrible. And he he's not really even in the rotation for the Jazz that much if he only gets 16 minutes per game in a game that is 32 minutes long. Or excuse me, 48 minutes long. So... I personally am not a huge Taylor Horton Tucker fan. I think that the Taylor Horton Tucker for Patrick Beverly trade was a lose-lose because no draft pick was given up. Stanley Johnson was waived by the Jazz, and Taylor Horton Tucker hasn't been that great, and neither has Patrick Beverly. So it's been kind of a wash of a trade. At least, I guess, the Lakers got off of Taylor Horton Tucker's contract, which honestly probably isn't even that good of a contract anymore. It's probably a bad contract at this point. His value over replacement player is a 0.0 this year, so... That means he's like about as average as they come. Um, and on NBA teams, there are some really bad players sometimes compared to the other players in the league. So 0.0 is, is not that good. Anywhere is number zero, coincidentally enough. His defensive box plus minus this year is only a 0.3, and that's what he's supposed to be so good at is like, oh, his defense is long arms. He should be able to get like a ton of steals. And we'd see him go off in a couple games every once in a while, but usually it was against worse competition. It wasn't against the best competition. So offensively this season, he's a negative 2.2. That's box plus minus. That's pretty bad. Like that's, that's pretty dang bad. Uh, He only has 0.02 of a win share, which means he's basically contributed nothing to winning or at least not that much. Uh, Defensively, he's had 0.6 win shares and offensively he has negative 0.2. So that means he loses more games for them offensively than he wins, which, yikes. Um, and he, he's just all around not that great of a player for the Jazz. And when I think about how much he was hyped up with the Lakers, he won a championship his rookie year where he only played six games. He was on a, I think he was, he was either on a two-way contract or they basically treated him like he was a two-way contract because he didn't play, obviously, like at all. Wins a championship the next year. He's like, oh, he's supposed to be this great player. Averages nine points per game. And just, like, I don't know. Doesn't really impress me that much. Gets 20 minutes per game. Only averages nine points. Two and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, like he always does. And then they bumped up his minutes the next year, too. Where he even started 19 out of his 60 games. Which is, like, starting a third out of the games that he has played for. Uh, or that he played that season, 25 minutes per game, so gets a five-minute boost, but only gets 10 points per game. And he's averaging a turnover and a half for, like, his entire career. So, like, that's that's not horrible, but it's not that great either. I just always felt like he ran around like he had his head chopped off, didn't really know how to play, would throw up some crazy shot that would go in sometimes that would get people really hyped up about him, but then he would also just miss so many layups, it felt like, and use his wrong hand on the wrong side, just try to take some layups, and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, uh, his last season with the Lakers, he shot 49% from two, 
which is just awful. Uh, throughout his entire career, he shoots 50% from two. So only makes half of his two-pointers, which isn't that great. Um, if you look at his field goal percentage overall, it's 43% for his entire career. 43. Not that good. His worst is this season where he's only shooting 39% from the field. That is really bad. A good field goal percentage is someone like, oh, Mitchell Robinson shoots like 60, 65%, something like that. That's really, really good. Average, I think, is around 50. Like, let's look at someone that's like an average shooter. Let's look at like Russell Westbrook. He's not an average shooter, so that was a bad lead up. But he is known to be like a little bit worse of a shooter. His field goal percentage is 43.7 throughout his entire career. He has never had a... Oh, okay. Outside of his rookie year, he's never had a season where he shot under 40% from the field. Under 41% even. And Taylor Horton Tucker is shooting 39%. So that is not very good. Let's look at like an average shooter. Like I would say LeBron James is close to an average shooter. He's probably around average, I would say. And I'm guaranteeing you he has never had a 39% field goal percentage season. The lowest, I think, is his rookie year where he shot 41.7%, which is pretty bad. Um, And then overall, his entire career, he's like a 50.5% field goal shooter, um, which just makes a lot more sense because they him he and Taylor Horton Tucker play more alike than him and Russell Westbrook in a way, meaning that they play like similar positions. And they both take a lot of shots around the rim, which I guess Westbrook does too. Um, so yeah, I guess they're both decent comparisons. But what I mean by that is just, he's not a good shooter. That's what I'm trying to get at. He's he gets 10 points per game, but it's it's not on the best efficiency. Um, I just think that he's totally disappeared. No one talks about him anymore, especially since if Patrick Beverly was good, then people would talk about this more. But Patrick Beverly has just not been that good this season. If that were the case, then people would be like, oh my god, the Lakers actually won this Taylor Horton Tucker trade because it would look to be an L. But for the Jazz, the only person that's talked about is Lowry Markkinen, other than, I guess, Walker Kessler and then players that they're trying to trade because Walker Kessler has been getting love since he's kind of doing better than Rudy Gobert is this season. But he's behind so many other players. You hear people talk about Kelly Olynyk more, the two I already named, Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, uh, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt. There's just so many players that I would pick over Taylor Horton Tucker on that team. And honestly, I don't think Taylor Horton Tucker is too much of a quality NBA player anymore. Um, I-, I would say that he is around a an t- below average NBA player, and he was expected to be better. He uh, gets paid like, what, $10 million a year or something like that, Thirteen. Very bad contract, in my opinion. Um, Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section below, though. I'm really curious. See you guys in the next one. Leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications to all. Peace.